Hey folks, Steve here from Garage of Evil. For those of you that tuned into the Ustream regarding uh, getting started with the Pickaxe 18M2, you were probably a little bit disappointed because the Ustream dropped uh, about 60 times. And you missed some really important stuff, mainly how to power it up um, and how to create a, a little circuit so we can download our programs to it. So this is my breadboard. And this, of course, is the Pickaxe 18M2. And uh, this, all this stuff here, don't worry about that. I built a little 5-volt power supply for mine. You don't have that yet. I'm doing my best to suppress a burp right now. It's not working. There, that's much better. Okay, so here is um, what you probably have, which is a battery pack um, with three cells in it, supplying 4.5 volts. And, of course, the pickaxe will work just fine on that. So quick review, breadboards, right? These are our, uh, our power buses. Um, these rows extend all the way across like so. Um, they actually extend all the way to about the middle on most breadboards where they're separated. And if you want to uh, continue that all the way across the breadboard, we need to use jumper wires. You can see that I've taken mine. And for instance, I've got the, power, the, uh, the positive here. And I've extended that all the way down. So it runs along this row too. Uh, and of course, the same thing with the negative. So it runs along this row. Now in the middle here, um, these are connected like such. So right, I put a piece of uh, wire here, it essentially connects all the way to here. And that'll be illustrated in a second, so uh, don't worry if you didn't quite catch that. So how do we put power to this thing? Well, if we look at our handy dandy pinout, and the pinout of course is what tells us what each of these pins or legs does. They all have a specific purpose, they're all called a specific name. Two of them in particular are called zero volt or ground and V plus, or positive. Now, again, I know by looking at the pinout that this one is ground and this one is positive. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just get a couple of jumper wires and I'm going to go from my negative bus here over to this guy and my positive over here over to this guy. Uh, normally I would recommend, in fact I should be doing it myself, that you turn power off. So you ensure that the connections that you make are completely proper and ready to go before you actually apply power. Um, because if you mess something up, you could potentially release the magic blue smoke, which is contained in this IC or integrated circuit. And if you release the magic blue smoke from any electronics component, it ceases to function. <clears throat> However, I'm going to go without a net on this one. Um, I know for a fact that I looked at my pin out already that this pin right here is my negative so I'm gonna go first into here and here making sure I get this just right is that it? Oh, let's see no, that's the guy, there he is, okay so my negative is now powered up and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the positive side I'm gonna come from this side just because it makes more sense um, knowing that I've extended my positive bus all the way down to this row I'm gonna first go in here and then carefully Make sure I get the right pin, which is him, and go here. And it's just that simple. My pickaxe is now powered up, and I'm ready to move on to the next step. Oh, and one quick note for those of you that are wondering what uh, these little bits of wire are sticking out. Um, I wasn't very delicate or careful when I pulled this particular chip out of a project board, and I managed to break these two pins. And uh, this is just my way of repairing those with a little piece of the jump of wire that makes a connection from the remainder of the pin. Um, into the clip inside the breadboard, so please disregard that. That's just me being stupid. But anywho, that's that. We've just powered up our pickaxe. We've got ground running to the proper pin, and we've got positive running to the proper pin. And of course, I don't have to go all the way to the pin because the breadboard rows are connected like such. So on to the next step.